Hello? Okay, great. All right, so looks like we have one watching now. This is our first AMA and as expected, there's not a whole lot of people there. Let's wait a little bit to, to see if somebody else shows up. I guess as you come in, you can go ahead and say hi. Um, I see that one is watching now, but I that could be just me. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's how this these things go. People are are busy. If you think there's a, a better time um, to do this, uh, just let me know. But um, I guess we can um, we can use the time here to answer some of the questions that you guys might have, um, and I'm I'm choosing some of the ones that I'm I'm seeing in, in new to me. So let's see here. Hi, Luiti. Thanks for being here. It's just you and me. Let's see, copy and paste here. <coughs> Okay, there is Martin. Hi, Martin. Thanks for coming in. Um, I don't know if, can you guys tell me if you hear me all right? I have the microphone a little bit, um, a little far away so that I can see the, the screen. Um, How's, how's Argentina? Muchos saludos para, para ti, Martín. Perfect. Audio is okay.
Um, Martin, tell us a little bit about you. What are you? Um, are you a developer or you're starting to do development? Um, what's kind of like the the deal with you? Are you learning the courses? Electronic engineer, that's awesome. That's very, very cool. Uh, let me put this here so that I can see in front. Uh, that's much better. I have an iPad here with uh, with the with the audio. And uh, Luis, well, you know, Luis is helping me. He's my brother. He lives in Panama. He's uh, he's been doing a lot of work for us. Pretty cool stuff. Um, he's uh, helping me with the Zero Tribe. And Zero Tribe is the new uh, sort of like Udemy platform, but it's going to be our own platform. Um, I don't know if you see any issues with the. Oh, I guess it stopped. Oh, oh that's because I disconnected the the headphones. Cool. And so Martin is learning Python. I I have. There's a way that I can that I can make the that I can make the the chat like messages come here, but I'm new. I'm using this software called OBS, which is uh, open broadcast uh, software or system. It's pretty cool actually. It allows you to do like a mini kind of like TV studio. And that's how I recorded that first. I have that video that I posted on my channel um, where I, kind of like answered a question of one of the users that was asking about the um, the Pi Big, Pi Big Crypt. Um, he had an issue with that. So um, so I recorded it with, with OBS and it, uh, it looked really good. The only thing that I didn't like too much is that it was, the camera was a little bit like jaggy. Like you see that the motion was um, was kind of like, robotic but right now i think it's it looks more or less okay the issue was the um the uh the frame size of the webcam was too large so it was it was doing that that very um jaggy jaggy uh signal but um oh mario mario is with luis hi mario <laughs> mario is also um just became part of the team and he's now going to be doing the um the video editing piece uh, he's already done one of the videos they as you all know i'm doing the new uh uh introduction to flask the the professional python web are using flask um from scratch so it's gonna be really cool i'm i'm so excited i just i'm finishing the python um uh the python section the learn python section and and it's it's looking really really good all right so let's see why don't we i want to check out some of the some of the questions here um and as people kind of like come in we can we can answer any any questions also remember that oh, i should put that on the on the slide here that you can ask uh questions to um add from zero edu with the hashtag um ask from zero and i'm monitoring the the notifications just in case people people write I, i'll get a notification right away uh, my mouse is acting up Let's see here okay so let's see this is a good question to answer um yasin said manage py run server 
uh, or Gunicorn fin finalizing the app. So she says, hi, Jorge. First of all, thank you for the course. I've learned an incredible amount in such a short time span. Thank you, Yasin. I have reached your final section deploying the Flask application on a live server through DigitalOcean. And, you know, she said the database, she, um, I, I said on the video that there's a few further steps that are necessary to finalize the project. I don't remember writing that I'm, I'm, or, or saying that in the course. Uh, that was like a bonus section, but I'm sure I said it. So, um, so she, she's asking, we have changed from manage py run server to Gunicorn. Is there any reason why one is favorably favorable to the other? And if yes, I suppose Gunicorn is, is there the possibility to combine these? Manage PY seems to be bringing a good fun few functionalities to the table, such as Python shell and DB migration. Yeah, she's absolutely correct. Is the app production ready as it is? Meaning are the security measures implemented, firewall, etc., good enough to set live? And if yes, how difficult would it be to add a domain name and to have the website behave like a normal customer facing site? Many thanks again for all the content you have already provided. Um, so, I guess um, there's there's many parts to this to this uh, um, to this question, and the first one is run server or Gunicorn. That's a very good that, that's a very good um, uh, question. So, a run server is more for uh, you testing the application locally in your development environment like in your laptop uh, even if you have like some sort of like in the office you have a, a development server we used to have that in our office um, and it was a um, it's it's okay to to run run server there um, the um, the other thing is, um, so Gunicorn, on the other hand, it's more kind of like a production level kind of um, of application. So Gunicorn is a um, it's it's a, it's a an application server that allows you to connect between um, the outside world or even um, the uh, another kind of like proxy or or load balancer application like nginx so let's see if i can put a i have a set up a a drawing here <laughs> to, uh, to explain this thing so where is the drawing application oh, right there i don't know if you guys see that um uh, let's put this in a little bit. Okay. Um, let me erase this. So, for example, so you have, you know, you have your, your Python, your Python application here. This is your like, like Python code. Right. And. Uh, hi, Andres. Uh, nice to see you here. Um, So glad you 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 made it. Um, I'm explaining like what why Gunicorn versus Run Server. One of the questions in the Udemy forum. So so let's say we have the internet here. We have the web. We have the internet here. Can you guys see that? Can you see the the drawings? Uh, okay. Um, let me know. Um, although my my writing is a little bit weird with the tablet, I have to. Um, practice a little bit more. 
So your Python code is here and the internet is here. So how do you get from the internet all the way down here? Well, so one way would be um, to have like manage py running here, manage py. But manage py is very unscalable. Like it's not very, um, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't scale in the sense that when you have when you have just one request coming, I mean that's fine. Like manage PY can definitely do the work. But um, if you have like what happens normally, which is this, you know, like not three but three thousand users at the same time, then then manage PY is gonna be like, okay, let me let me answer this, and then it takes you know a little bit here. And then let me answer this. And my, meanwhile, this 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 guy is just like waiting and waiting. So it's not it's not very good because this person could be waiting three, ten, you know, twenty seconds. So we don't want that, right? We we want to have something that like server speed these days is very very important. And even Google, Google like when it crawls your page um, to put you your. Um, your domain or your 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 pages on the Google search. If your page takes more than x amount of seconds, then then it's going to be um, problematic, right? So what you need to do is you need to um, scale that, and the way to scale that is making more what's called um, put the eraser a little bit bigger you need to make make the 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 that the application scalable horizontally so that means that if you have you know this request here then you have some sort of process that immediately answers to them and then this one here the same thing and then the same same thing here so these are this is this is what we call workers in Gunicorn. And workers are just basically like um, parallel uh, mini applications that are answering to all the all the requests. So um, so in that case, manage py is not very good. Manage py only can do one at a time. So let's erase manage py from there. And. So now we need something else, right? So that's where Gunicorn comes in. So Gunicorn is a multi-threaded, multi-worker web server or application server that sits on top of your application. So what happens is Gunicorn is constantly communicating with your application and your application is talking back to it, right? But now with Gunicorn, you're able to like, like I said before, uh, it, it spawns all these little workers and you can define how many workers um, it runs at the same time depending on RAM size and um, and CPU, CPU power. So if you have a very powerful server, you can have many workers, like, you know, 15 workers. Um, if you have only... Um, Hey, uh, Mass, uh, I'm, I'm explaining why. So there, there was this um, student that asked the difference between using Managed PY and, and Gunicorn in terms of like the development environment. So um, so which one is better to use in, in, a, in, a, in a server application? So each one of these workers is going to respond immediately to all those um, to those requests on on the server. So that's why Gunicorn is is definitely better. Now there's an extra, there's an, another layer here that, and that's why I think I might have uh, told um, answer the student. Um, so she, uh, Jazine, like like there's other steps required, and she was asking about the security. But let's let's see what the the next setup or next step for that would be. So it's not very good to expose Gunicorn to the world directly. Like you can do it. Like definitely if you have a small 
like blogging and environment you and and I'll go to your question Andres in a, in a in a second but so if you have if you have unicorn exposed to the world then it's it's okay if you have few a few let's say users like it's your personal blog and you don't expect to have m many users but even then I would like advise to not do that what I would do or I, I always do is that I set up something in front of this and that something is called nginx and I'm I don't remember and nginx so what's nginx nginx is a very robust um, and very fast uh, web server it's technically a proxy so a proxy is a networking um, term that that uh, it means that it's it's it, it allows you to route requests to the different services of that uh, of of that server but but it is a very good web server like the web server piece of nginx is very good and it's taking off and i don't know in the last um the last measures um i think nginx was about to i mean apache is still um the the most popular web server but i think nginx was um was catching up and let's see what the latest i mean this is from it doesn't say from when but as you can see here you have apache oh, i guess where is an nginx I was trying to get like nginx um, usage 2018 statistics Let's see so see um apache is used by 47 percent and nginx is used by 36 percent i don't know from when it doesn't say the date here it says February, so I'm I'm pretty. I need to double check, but it looks like this is like recent, like February of this year. So as you can see, Nginx is already almost thirty six percent of the market share. And before it was like eighty percent Apache or something like that, like really, really, um, really high. So going back to our diagram, so Nginx would be on top of Unicorn, and Nginx would talk to Unicorn. But Nginx would be the one that you actually are exposing to the to the World Wide Web, um, and and the you know the way that this would work is that you have Nginx is is running on port eighty, and then you have Gunicorn running on port um, uh, five thousand like like Manage Py, and and but but Nginx knows how knows how to connect to these workers here in the back, but port eighty which is HTTP um is then what responds to the world now if i were even like i knew that it was going to get a, kind of like a, a lot of traffic then i would definitely have something in front here so it would i wouldn't expose nginx directly but i would have a load balancer which in in, in aws is called elastic load balancer and why a load balancer so a load balancer allows you to connect more than one server to this appliance so that you can you can then you know have a better better throughput uh, better speed and better performance so um, so take a picture of that <laughs> uh, before I erase it but in any ways here the internet would be the request would be coming to the ELB to the load balancer then the load balancer would request to nginx nginx would request to gunicorn and gunicorn would talk to would be the one actually running the, your your um your python application using whiskey it's not whiskey like i'm not telling you to go get a drink although it's five o'clock somewhere right we can definitely have a whiskey here on the ama next next week and so by the way guys this is every every week every friday at 5 p.m gmt uh 12 p.m eastern so 
don't miss one of any of the shows that I'm going to be putting. So going back to the um, to the load balancer here, um, I need to learn how to do this better. I probably have, would have used the lasso the lasso tool. But in any in any case, so you have the ELB. What I was saying before, you have the ELB here. And this ELB, its main function is to connect more than one server to the um, to the to the internet to that domain. So your domain here would be, you know, www.example.com. And then um, that that example.com, the DNS is is related to this AWS or you know, DigitalOcean also has load balancers. Um, then it would say it has, you know, this is an EC2 server that has uh, Nginx and Guni and Python, your Python application. It has multiple workers as we saw before. But then, let me see if I can do this trick here. Uh, plus, uh, Look at my drawing skills. Uh, so I guess how do I copy this? Ah, there you go. Copy. And then paste. Oh, there you go. So you have another one here, and then um, and then another one here. Oops, sorry. <laughs> no. Sorry guys. This is terrible. I'm wasting your guys time, sorry. Uh, how do I move this? Oh, there you go. And you have the third server here, finally. Okay, and then th what happens is, um, whatever so let's say that this this server has a load a load is is like how how busy they are right so um so and and that's a measure of the cpu it's kind of like three or four or or, or whatever um well four is a high number they should be below like one or or two but let's say the load of this server is two and this server is one and this server is zero the, the elect, uh, elastic load balancer or the load balancer will detect that. He can read how how loaded your, your server is and start sending more requests to, well, actually this one here until it gets to more or less the same load. So instead of zero, now it's one and it starts to send this one and then it goes to two and then it sends more here. But it's always kind of like, that's why it's called a load balancer. It's, it's making all the servers be... Um, more or less at the same at the same level and if you have a lot of traffic in any like let's say you have a promotion or you have a an ad running then then you would have uh you can add just like more ec2 servers here and and add them to the load balancer and then and then your your load will go down across the board and and that way you can scale your your application um so Andres was asking, how, what do you recommend to install Gunicorn or in virtual env or in the system? Gunicorn in virtual env. Well, so um, you install virtual env on the system, definitely. Um, I'm, it's not like, like you cannot install Gunicorn in, in virtual. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, no, definitely Gunicorn in, in virtual env. That, that's fine because 
if by any chance you have you want to have another version of Gunicorn running in if for another application that's running on the same server, then definitely you can uh, you can you you can do um, another version of Gunicorn in the same. So definitely Gunicorn uh, on the on the on the pip install requirements uh, txt. Um, so that was like a long winding road to to get to uh, to get to the get get to that explanation. So uh, that that answers number one and number two is is the app a product up uh, production ready as it is the short answer is yes because you know firewall and um other security settings those are set more on the server level than on the um on the application level but you definitely you want to on this on this uh elastic load balancer you want to have only port 80 for example open you don't want to have SSH uh, uh, open to the world. And this gives me a good idea to maybe do a, maybe a very short course on security. Actually, I have it, um, although I, I have that on the list, but for PCI. So PCI compliance is a big, it, it's a big thing. It's kind of like the, um, it, it's, uh, it, it's the uh, credit card consortium, like protection uh, guidelines. Um, and, uh, it's, a, that's a little, a little bit more complicated, a little more like down the path of, of super secure applications, but, uh, I might, I might do like a, and I'm going to write it down actually here on my, on my Trello board, uh, make a, make a, a small, you know, I'm, I'm going to start doing this like either one video course or very short, like playlist type of courses. And I'm going to do one with, with like basic security um, information. But but in any case, the answer to to uh, just seeing some production ready, it is production ready. The the blogging application can be scaled up and down um, using load balancers and and, uh, and Goonicorn. So and as long as you don't expose anything but but port 80 then then it should be it should be more than enough um so i guess i'm gonna tell Justine that we answered the question uh hi Justine. i've answered this question on my First AMA. <laughs> Check it out here, and I'll put the link once the once YouTube uh, encodes this. So um, that's that. I think I think uh, see me. Andres had a question. What do you recommend? Oh no, that's my question in terms of performance. Okay, so that was not a question. It was just that's what he wanted to know. Um, so. So cool. I think that's um, that was that. Um, there's a lot of like Docker uh, questions uh, lately. I've um, I've had uh, people asking about it. Also, MariaDB seems to be not available anymore on Windows. I, my brother Luiti was as, actually asking, um, telling me be, uh, about this. Um, but it, it looks like the it looks like the the MariaDB uh, Chocolady um, uh, package for Windows is is uh, either corrupt or it's not working. So Luis had to had to do a had to install MySQL, which is it's fine. MariaDB and MySQL are are basically the same thing. Um, so I'm gonna say to Ash, probably copy and paste. So the answer is. Uh, if if you if you want to try out 
um, the MySQL package on Chocolady, then 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 definitely definitely do that. Um, uh, my brother Luis, he he started using Windows, um, and and he installed the MySQL uh, Chocolady package. I can't remember why I didn't use it the first time. I think it was probably because the MySQL package in Chocolady wasn't working or something, and I decided to go with MariaDB. So, but but if you do Choco install MySQL and it works, then then go for it uh, and do it for you know for now just use just use MySQL. Um, if you have if you're using Docker, that's that's another another thing. So Luis had a question. Uh, need, the question need to be aligned with the subject you were talking about, or no? You can ask anything. That's why it's called AMA. AMA stands for Ask Me, Ask Me Anything. AMA. So let's see what else. Oh, I had a very good question that somebody emailed me. But while Luis is, is doing his question, um, let me turn off the browser just one second. Because I don't want you to see all the all the emails that I get, but. But I I, th I thought this was a, a great a great question. So Andrew is asking. So I just bought your courses on Flask, and I'm excited to take them. Uh, thanks, Andrew. I've messed with Flask in the past, but I never systematically learned it. The end goal is to make a career change, though. I've been in IT for about eight years, but not in development. Um, besides this course, what kind of things would you recommend I do to get that job as a Python developer? I see that you have a lot of experience leading teams. What would you want on your team that I can work on developing myself into now? Thanks a lot. No, thank you, Andrew. Um, and I'm going to also <laughs> copy and paste this. You know, developers are specialist in copying, copying and pasting. However, don't think that you can code just by copying and pasting things from Slack Overflow, well, I mean Stack Overflow, or from Slack for that um, in the same vein, because you want to understand what you're copying and pasting. Never copy and paste without knowing what you're doing. So, um, so to Andrew, the answer is, um, you know, the courses, when you make the courses or you, you go through the courses, you get into, uh, I would say, you know, maybe 30% of the way there. Especially if you do all the courses. Like if you do introduction, advanced, the API, and, um, and maybe uh, the Docker one, not so much. Um, the Git, definitely. The Git, the Git course. So, so Git introduction, advanced, and API courses. I would say you're like 30% there. What I recommend people that want to get in a career, that want to like find a job as a developer, there's um, there's three things that you can do. One is build applications. Like 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 for like let's say you have a you have a hobby that you can yeah, that can build an application against that hobby or you you have something that interests you to figure out how it works let's say you want to build like an, an accounting system or or something that um, is related to the work you do today so I don't know what Andrew does today so for example he does I don't know uh, carpentry so if he can build an application that 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 facilitates any part of his carpentry day-to-day -day job I would start there, but I would say build like, you know, two or three robust applications. And while you're building those applications, you're going to have to um, figure out things. And, and that's how you learn, like you, you're act actively uh, breaking things or there's things that you don't know how to do. Like, for example, for the carpentry application, you need to do a, a very 
uh, robust, like, uh, you know, signing, forgot password kind of like flow, or maybe you have to connect to our, a Carpentry API. I don't know. Let's say that it's a, um, a shopping system for, for Carpentry tools and you have to connect to Amazon or you want to connect to Google Shopping. So that's how you learn. You learn like building these applications. Once you have like two or three robust applications, definitely have them in GitHub as a public um, as a public um, uh, repository so that other people can see. And and this is this is part of the social proof. When you when you are interviewing somewhere, and if I was like the hiring manager, one of the things I always ask to to get um, to to look at a person before even the resume is what's his GitHub uh, repo, you know account, and I check out what his code looks like, and that is your like that's your bottom line that's your that's kind of like where you start everything, and if you have two or three good applications, you're uh, I would say you're halfway there you're halfway there, now of course. Um, it depends on what city you live. Like if you live in New York City, for example, like I do, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of competition. So you need to like maybe, uh, you know, do other things. But I would say if you're outside of New York City, um, I think it, there's a slighter better chance that you can compete for and, and this is where I'm going um, at is is get small jobs and small jobs meaning you talk to your family uh, friends and you offer them your development services for their you know businesses and and not do like just plain websites like that's more a design thing and now there's so many bootstrap themes and things like that that that's not really what I'm talking about I'm talking about building applications that really solve a problem and and you know more platforms than than what i call brochureware or you know websites that are just pretty you know three menus and you know what we offer and contact us like you know try to get involved somewhere there you can also try to um uh to do like meetups um, of businesses that you more or less know and offer your, your services there. Um, but th so the second level is definitely s start writing small applications for companies that, for small companies in your area that, that where you can kind of like get a, a portfolio that's no longer just GitHub repository of, of small things you've done, but now you have, uh, actual, you know applications and you're not going to charge for those or or very little like don't expect this to be um your your ticket to to become rich right right away right so so once you you have that experience under your belt and you've written like two or three applications for paying customers for for actual businesses then i would say um that's your step number three which is internships and again, internships are very, I mean, they're free or they're low, low paid, but try to get into internet companies or, or, or company startups uh, mostly that are looking for, for people to like try out. And it's not easy. You're going to get a lot of rejection, but it, it happens every day. And, and I've gotten to know people like I, I have a, a guy that I met like three years ago or four years ago in like uh, an NYU student event. Uh, it was kind of like a um, like a job fair kind of thing. And I didn't hire, I was working at Venmo as, as a matter of fact at the moment. And I didn't, you know, I didn't have an opening for him, but he, he kept, you know, talking to me, he kept connected. So I would say that's layer number four, which is networking, like know people, go out there, try to get a mentor, try to, to find, people that are above your level and 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 to learn from them and even if if you're not necessarily working for them you kind of like ask them questions and and there's people out there who want to help out and and my, myself included like um reach out to to my you know linkedin and connect there i like i don't accept connections from like businesses that are trying to sell me stuff but i'll accept every connection if you put on your message that 
you saw the you know my ma ama or you've done my courses or you're a person that wants to make it um definitely i will i will connect with you and again you know my linkedin twitter instagram is sfubar uh, at sfubar so um so that's a long kind of like answer but that's that's kind of like what what i would do uh and you know my my answer to andrew but to anybody else who's doing the courses and thinking or wondering should i um how how do i make this a career right so that's that's like that's what we're we're all trying to do and that's what i'm trying to help you out with so that was that was the answer there and we're almost out of time we have 10 minutes left and luiti is uh has a has a question and he says can i ask a dummy question there's no dummy questions ever like all questions are are valid in in the ama and and in life never be too ashamed to ask to ask them something so if i accidentally made a change on my local master branch and it's a dirty state how do i revert it revert it to a clean state so i can make a git pull of the remote master branch okay so that is part of the of the of the git course but let's see if you see the the terminal there so let's say that i have um i don't know if i have branches here i don't have branches in here but in any case let's say that you have um You have some changes, right? So let's do uh, touch um, change dot txt, and now we have you know your brand, your master is in this state. Now th the key thing here, Luis, is that you don't um, you don't push that to the master the remote master. So if you have done that already, you're a, a little bit screwed um but if you haven't then then that's fine so oh the terminal is a little bit cut off i'm gonna have to change that but i think you can read the thing here but let's say i do git commit uh oh wait add git add right git commit m my bad change right ah i have to config user dot name Jorge Escobar and then my email uh, Jorge at okay so now I do git commit amend reset author okay so now I have, I have the, that change, like my bad change, right? So, but you realize that this is, this is not, the, it wasn't the right branch and you need to like revert that. So again, as long as you haven't done, if you did, if you did get pushed, then the problem is a little bit more complicated because then you would need to um, probably um, delete that last commit on the master but in any case hopefully that's not the case but it you you do this this the, the following so you do git reset hard and then you put a uh, head correct so that means reset this repository hard means like e erase the files locally and then head uh caret is like one head before so this is the current head you're going to move to this head here. So if you do that, then if you do git status, um, you're fine. And then if you do git log, you're on the, on the, on that previous brand, I mean, commit, which was the one that, that you wanted. So I hope that answers your, your question, Luis. And there's a little bit of a delay here, but that's, that's pretty much it um all right i think that does it for this first ama 
thank you everyone that that came and and visited um thank thank you martin and and dress and i'll see you next week friday Ray or, rain or shine i'll be here um the idea is that we um start building this uh this community so thank you and uh and see you next friday at uh 12 p.m gmt i meant 5 p.m gmt 12 p.m eastern all right see you guys <laughs>